Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. It is Boxing Day, uh, the 26th of December, if you don't have Boxing Day where you live, um, <laughs> here in the UK, so yeah, day after Christmas. Uh, so yesterday I was hosting Christmas, everything went absolutely perfectly, um, had a lovely time, uh, I was really happy with the, the food that I cooked and everything, and my mum brought over dessert, um, and yeah, had a, had a really lovely day and it just went perfectly so I was really really happy with Christmas yesterday and today um, I was just you know chilling and such and but rather annoyingly I've gotten and hurt my ankle uh, well my heel really because what it was it was it was so beautiful this morning it was there wasn't this cloud in the sky it was blue it was crisp cold and I was like you know what I'm gonna go out for a really long walk and there's a six mile loop around where I live so I thought you know what I'm gonna do that about one and a half to two miles in I was going over a bridge and uh, it's got it's quite high quite steep and I was going over it and suddenly my left heel started hurting and I was like okay that's a bit weird but you know I'm just going to carry on I wouldn't know that so I carried on for the whole six miles um and uh, yeah by the end of it my 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 foot it was feeling okay but I think that's because my obviously with the walking and everything my foot expanded in my trainer and so you know it was you know good took my trainer off and I am um, I I'm not very I'm not walking very well at all I've done something to my foot my heel I don't know what I've done um I don't know if maybe because I've been wearing my heel boots uh more often lately that just over time of using it my heel's gotten sore and I've not realized it and that walk is just you know emphasize that i don't know um but yeah i've i've gone and i've gone and hurt my my foot so it's a good excuse to stay in the house so rather than go to the sales but i have actually <laughs> I place a Waterstones uh, order so you'll be finding out what i bought from Waterstones once that arrives um but anyway so um yeah Christmas went went well and everything and uh, I have been busy reading and I have just finished reading Mexican Gothic by Silvia Marino Garcia and I'm here to talk about it. Now first of all I want to make the biggest apology about this book, massive apology and that is the apology is because in my announcement video when I picked what books I was going to read next and this came up and I read to the back of the book, I was pronouncing, and I did say, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, but I, I, I used the name Naomi. And I look back at that video now and I'm like, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? Because our character's actual name, no M.A., doesn't even have the letter A in it. So how was I saying Naomi, which has an A in it, and not not register that fact? So I want to apologise straight off that the name that I was saying in the um, announcement video, uh, reading the back of the book, that I got her name completely wrong. And so I am sorry. So there we go. So that's out of the way. I feel better now having said that. I probably didn't need to apologise because I actually said in the video at the time I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. Um, but it just, it really irks me that Naomi, clearly you can hear it, has an A and this character's name doesn't even have an A in her name. So there we go. I, I just want to get that out of the way. So... In case you don't know what this book is about, uh, it's set in the 1950s in uh, uh, Mexico City uh, and it follows a woman called Noemi. <laughs> Got her name right. Um, so yeah, we it's in the 1950s. We don't know the exact year because it's never stated. Um, but she does refer to um, or should say our and narrator because it's the person um, written book uh, does talk about a gown which was purchased in the early 1950s that uh, she was wearing so I'm going to guess that it would be mid maybe late 50s at a push but there's no and she talks about the old styles of cars and such but there is no actual 
um, there is nothing to say explicitly, this is the year in which it is set. So, Noemi, she lives uh, with her family. She is a, a socialite. She, uh, a socialite, not light. <laughs> Ite, light. I'm getting my words muddled now. Uh, she, you know, she attends debutante balls. She has she's had various uh boyfriends and you know stuff as stuff as that but she's never really found love before um but she is such an interesting character she's very bold she says what she thinks and such um but uh, yeah people are just drawn to her and at the beginning of the book she gets a letter from her cousin who is recently married and has moved away and this letter says I think my husband is trying to kill me. I need your help. Please come to the house. She's, she's begging. Her cousin is begging her to come to the house. So, of course, she's going to go. When she gets there, she discovers this, the house that, that um, her cousin is, is basically locked away in and is being cared for in is like a prison in a way so her cousin uh, she, uh so no ma uh she cannot see her cousin without the permission of uh, of um her cousin's mother-in-law so uh, her husband's mother who basically runs the house um so that yeah so she's she just can't access her and and the, the cousin Clementine, I should say, sorry, I haven't said her name, um, needs to be given uh, various medications and such. And uh, it's all being controlled by the people in this house. But also there are other rules that Noemi is not allowed to drive. She's not allowed to smoke. When they have meals, it has to be in the dining room. It has to be in silence. There is no electricity in the house. They have to use candles. There are certain areas at times of the day in which you can access things, but you can't later. It, it is just like, it's 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 a really weird house and it, there's there's something about the house that just makes her uneasy and it's all about her going to the house trying to figure out what is going on and her her, her cousin says to her look my i really think my husband is trying to kill me there are ghosts in the walls they keep talking to me keep your eyes open and she, you know, she's saying these kind of things. Uh, and so the story explores trying to find out exactly what is going on inside this house. So that's your overall synopsis. Now, when I started this book, I was like, OK, I need I really want this book. Like as soon as we get to the house, which is not far into the book whatsoever, this is only just over 300 pages. So it's pretty short compared to what it potentially could have been okay um so she gets to the house very quickly so once she got she you know goes through the whole getting the letter and deciding to go and all that i was like okay from that point on that's when i want the gothic darkness to start but it doesn't it is it's a house that is so unusual and has all of these weird rules and characters within it um, and you're yeah you're locked in this like airless space but it just doesn't have any atmosphere whatsoever and I was thinking what what is going on this doesn't make any sense it, it to, for a gothic novel okay I understand like slow burn or whatever but if you're going into a place that's very rigid with rules and you know and structuring and as I said airless and just dark and dingy you've got to go pow you've got to have it there right away uh, at least that's how I feel and so what I kept thinking of was Laura Purcell now I, I'm sure possibly in other reviews when I've talked about gothic writing I'm probably sick of the sound of me <laughs> talking about Laura Purcell but the thing with her is that she is a modern female gothic writer who knows how to instantly take you there and i was like you know what i want i want that house to be like when we first go to the house in bone china i want to feel the moisture in the air not just have a character go it feels damp in here no i want to feel it 
I want to feel that I am there. And it just didn't happen. And it made me really frustrated. Now, very interestingly, though, uh, when weird things start happening and dreams start happening, it slowly starts to creep in. And you could say it's kind of a slow burn. But at the same time, it goes from like no atmosphere to all of a sudden one scene like a dream be full of it and you're like oh okay wow okay right okay so let's let's keep that going no you're back to no nothing and then bam you'll have it and then you pull back again and then the final like 100 pages or so is so good it's great um and it is you go from like zero to a thousand for the sudden you know throw into really deep dark rich gothic writing and it's like because it's going up and down and up and down it is so weird i mean if i had done my usual you know 100 pages see how i go with it and then decide to carry on or not there is a potential i could have stopped and I'm glad I didn't stop, but at the same time, a hundred pages is a third of this novel, a third of it. And if it's it's called Mexican Gothic, Gothic is in the title. Gothic is implied all the way through the book, uh, uh, the back of the book and everything in the description. Gothic should be what is presented as soon as we get to that house, but it just wasn't there. It's so strange. And for it to go, like I said, all of a sudden, you've got it that you're going up, down, you go slow, la, 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 and then go wham, straight up to the top. It's jarring. It is really jarring. But that last 100 pages, as I said, was, was great. So it's really unbalanced. It's really unbalanced. But that last 100 pages did impress me and it did prove to me that this is someone who knows how to write that gothic. I just wish they would be more consistent or at least in this book was more consistent. This is the first time that I've read anything from Sylvia so I don't know if her other book she has that consistency or if this is a um, structuring pattern that she has chosen to stick with um, in other books. I have absolutely no idea. So I can't, you know, judge Sylvia's writing until I've read more of her writing. But definitely those last 100 pages were really strong. And I'm really glad that it went out on a strong point because the actual um, information about the house and what is going on brilliant i thought that was great i thought that was really interesting clearly haunting of hill house was um was some kind of uh well i don't want to say inspiration but could have helped I, th I think possibly um with teasing out a few things even like you could also argue like the last of us kind kind of thing i thought the stuff that was brought up in that, especially that last 100 pages was brilliant i thought it was a great concept and what is so great is that it combined something that's real with something that's very um gothic orientated right you know uh so what it, it really that i love that kind of combination of reality versus possible i don't want to say spiritual but but something that's otherworldly to have that reality link to it that 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 made it stand out quite a bit but it's just a shame as i said like the first two thirds of the book you're just going down, up, down, up, down, up. It's, it, 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 yeah. I think it could have been better if the atmosphere was there from the beginning. I think it really would. Uh, one other thing is that the various characters in this talk about the history of um, a period of history in Mexico uh, 
re uh, that relates to 1915. I know nothing about Mexican history. Um, so I was like, I don't understand what they're talking about. I don't know what that means. So I had to go out and do some Googling, and do some research whilst I was reading this book. Now, I don't mind exploring and, go, and going, okay, right, that's it. But as a reader, it made me feel completely disconnected because I don't, I didn't understand it. I didn't know what that meant. What, what, what was that emphasis about events that happened in 1915, which would then have ramifications down the line to the 1950s? Um, and it was only until I did that research that I knew. So for me, I think it would have been better if there was more of a, um, well, not just, I was just about to say description, maybe not description, but more of an explanation exactly what certain things uh, meant. Like, say, for example, like there's sat, she's sat talking to a character and the character says a reference, you know, says, oh, our family was on that side or whatever completely opposite to yours and then just have say like no ma understood that meant that dot 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 and then we have a bit of an explanation to go and um, so then the reader can go oh okay i get it um so at times it felt like parts of this this book was written for people who already understood the history and someone like me who didn't until I did the Googling, it felt really kind of disconnecting. So, yeah, so it had it had some problems, but it did really make a massive comeback in that last hundred pages, that last third of the book. So I can't um, say it was bad overall or anything because it wasn't. And I did like char the characters. I thought they were well, um, well written. I, I liked the house and everything. I just feel like, oh, if only it's kind of like an alternate way of explaining when the when the as I said, the gothic kind of elements were like this. It's kind of like when you watch an adaptation of um, Victorian England, or you know, like Charles Dickens' novel or what or whatever, and clearly the whoever has made it did not understand what it was like like it, it's too clean it's too shiny there is no mud around there is no one you know in rags sort of thing it just kind of like you, okay you've got the basics but you're not there I want to be right there and in the last hundred pages Sylvia wrote it so that you were there for that whole slog um but i wanted to be there from as soon as we saw the house i hope that makes it clear where what i mean <laughs> um so yeah so it's not a bad book as i said it's well paced the characters are well written there's various stuff going on that keeps it moving well it's just the atmosphere wasn't really there and the history stuff it needed explaining or at least i felt it needed explaining for someone like me who doesn't know that history so yeah i enjoyed it overall um now i did have a look at wikipedia about the adaptation of this because in 2020 i remember it being announced that this was going to be made into a tv drama and that's what brought it to my attention um and i'd held off buying it and then one day i just decided to buy it and thus i have a copy now um there hasn't been any word about it since then but obviously when it was picked up in 2020 as when covid hit and then there have been strikes and everything and i nothing i haven't heard anything since then and i couldn't find any further information about it since then um except that there was there was a plan to make it between an eight to ten part series i don't think that's that's logical whatsoever i think between three and five at a push um because as i said it's only 300 pages and what you can put 
in like a description of something that takes up half to a whole page can be done in a single shot in a drama or a film. So I really honestly feel that with this being made into a TV series, it's going to have to be something like between three to five parts at a push. Eight to ten is not great. It, it, that's too much. That's just going to drag it out to degree that it's just not necessary. And um, I believe, I think it was an American company that picked it up. So an American episodes tend to be about 45 minutes an episode i mean yes if you think about like a bbc drama or something like in the uk where they're maybe between 45 minutes to an hour an episode um and so yeah so this is why around the three hour mark or something you could say like about four episodes or something american episodes um so yeah i think that is doable but having eight to ten too long too long it just won't work so there that's uh so that's how we feel so at the moment there's nothing more about a drama of it and um, it will be interesting when we get there um if we get there because i can't find any information further about it you know it will see what what happens with it um but yeah those are my thoughts on american gothic by sylvia marina garcia so okay and i forgot to say this cover gorgeous i absolutely love the cover um so my usual questions would i read this again now that i know what the last third of the book was yeah i think i think i would but it might be a while bef before i reread it because you know i've got my cheaper red list is ridiculous um <laughs> would i recommend this to anyone i don't no, if I would recommend it, honestly, just because of the faults it has with it. But I'm not going to say don't read it if someone were to, to ask me about it. Um, so, yeah, I'd say give it a go. Um, but there were some problems that I had. Um, would you, would I, sorry, not would you, uh, would I read any more of Sylvia's work? yes as i said you know that last hundred pages was really good so i there's definitely she's got she's got an edge she's you know she's got the goods i just wish there was that consistency and obviously to know if that consistency is there in her other books or if it's just literally the structure of this one book um i i would need to read her other books so yeah i would i definitely give her other books another go uh a go not another go oh god you tell i'm tired um so those are my thoughts on mexican gothic by sylvia marina garcia uh have you read this book i'd love to know what you think leave me comments and comments below leave me thumbs up thumbs down time to get out like your side and i will back with my thoughts on my next read which i've already announced which is the prestige by christopher priest now what i'm planning especially because i've gone and hurt my my, my heel um i'm not going to be going out so i'm hoping to get through this book by new year and then i'm able to start 2024 with ken follett's century um trilogy which i've already announced which i think would be a really really great way to start the year so um yes yeah, so i'll be back my thoughts on the procedure as soon as i'm done all right then guys bye